welcome to this Helmut user's guide to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is digital money. That means it isn't controlled by a bank or some country's government. It runs on a network of computer servers located all over the world. And thanks to an incredibly complex code, it's extremely secure, cannot be counterfeited, and payments are irreversible. While we all dream of the day you can fill your dose of therapeutic helminths at the local pharmacy, at the moment, helminthic therapy is in more of a legal gray area. Most postal services don't seem to know or care when a shipment of helminths crosses their path, but in the US and Australia, there have been some issues with packages being seized if customs suspect they may contain helminths. There's no risk to you as the recipient, but that's why certain providers choose not to ship to certain countries. The providers that do ship to those countries want to be extra careful. So they try to remain as anonymous as possible, which is partially done by only accepting payment in Bitcoin. This isn't just to ensure their personal safety, but also the health of all the patients who depend on them for their vital supply of helmets. There are three ways to obtain Bitcoin. You can buy them in person if you know someone who's willing to sell. There are Bitcoin ATMs where you can insert cash or card and the machine will convert it to Bitcoin for you. And and there are Bitcoin exchanges, which are much cheaper than either of the other two options, which typically charge a fee of 10% or higher. Coinbase is one of the most popular cryptocurrency exchanges, which is what most of the Helminthic therapy community uses to place their orders. It is more expensive than most other exchanges. It has a transaction fee of 1%, but it also has the advantage of being insured. So if the site crashes, you will be recompensated. You do have to upload some sort of official government ID to verify your account, but once you've done that, you're good to go. Similar to PayPal, you can choose to link your bank account or your debit or credit card. Your bank may charge a fee for outgoing wire transfers, but Coinbase does not charge you to receive them. It does take a couple days for funds to arrive though, and the value of Bitcoin fluctuates constantly, so it's better to transfer a little extra just in case. Since the value of Bitcoin is constantly changing, Helmuth providers quote prices in US dollars. Since US dollars are relatively stable, everyone is paying pretty much the same price no matter how much the numbers on the Bitcoin side change. If you're not paying in US dollars, you need to convert the price of the order into your own currency first. If you're not sure, ask your homeless provider and they'll convert it for you. Once you've converted the amount you need to pay from your currency to Bitcoin, transfer the funds immediately to your provider before the exchange rate has time to change. If you've already made a bank transfer to Coinbase, the funds will be in your Coinbase account whenever you're ready to convert them to Bitcoin, and Coinbase will only charge you a 1% fee. If you prefer to pay instantly and avoid the hassle of transferring too much or too little, you can pay by card but then you lose 3.99% in fees. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you guys through how to set up a Coinbase account and make a Bitcoin transfer. First of all, you're going to go to coinbase.com and click on get started. Enter in your first and last name, your email address, and choose password. Check that little box and click create an account. Um, then you have to agree to the, all of their privacy policies and verify your email address. Once you've verified your email, you have to set up two-factor authentication. With Coinbase, you don't have the option of opting out of it. So you're going to select your country, enter in your phone number, and click to have the code sent via text to your phone. Once you get the text, you enter in the code and submit it, and then you have to verify your identity. You're going to enter in your birth date, address, and apparently now you have to say what you're using Coinbase for, what your source of funds are, and what your current occupation is. Um, I'm honestly not sure what difference it makes, if any at all, so I kind of just selected whatever felt like the closest fit even though none of them really seemed like an exact match. So then you're gonna click continue and to finish verifying your identity, you have to upload a form of government issued ID. 
which means either a passport, driver's license, or photo ID. Once you choose which type of ID you want to upload, you have the option of uploading via webcam, a mobile camera, or uploading a file from your device. So then you upload and submit the image. So they say verification often occurs within hours, but may take longer. So I was ready to call it a night at this point, but I actually got the verification email about 45 minutes later, I think. Then I was able to sign in. You do your two-factor verification again with your text message code. And if you check the box there, that means that you don't have to enter in the code for the next 30 days which is pretty practical if you don't happen to have your phone on you when you're trying to log in. Once the code has been verified, you also have to authorize the device you're using. So you're going to get an email for that containing your location and IP address and have to authorize it to make sure that no one is trying to hack into your account. Okay, I'm logged into my Coinbase account. I'm gonna go down to my portfolio, click on euros or dollars, whatever your currency is, and then click on deposit. Because my Coinbase is linked to a German bank account, obviously my screen is gonna look slightly different, but basically you just enter in the card information like you would on any other website enter in the amount you want to transfer. This particular provider expects 450 US dollars. So I'm going to go and check what the current conversion is. 450 US dollars equals in euros currently 408. So I'm going to go back over to Coinbase and I'm going to put 410 just to be safe, add a little bit extra. You see here if I do the instant transfer, it's going to charge a processing fee of 635. So to save that extra money, I'm going to do a normal bank transfer. So I'm going to enter Enter in the name of my bank, my name, and how much I want to transfer. Still going to do 410. You can change the currency and choose to pay in in US dollars, so then you don't actually have to do the conversion yourself. But I prefer to do it in euros because my account is in euros and you might be charged a fee from your bank if you have a charge in a different currency. But your provider should tell you what the conversion is anyway. I click continue, click these double boxes to copy the reference number. They say that's really important. The transfer will not go through without the reference number. Then I click continue. And here I've got all the information I need to make the transfer. So I'm gonna go over to my bank's website, log into the online banking, um, click to create a transfer, and here I'm going to enter in that reference code. I'm going to copy the IBAN or account number depending on what you use where you are. I'm going to put in the same amount again, 410. And for the name, you do have to manually copy and paste that. They don't have those double boxes there. Then I am going to send that transfer. Okay, so now my transfer has been sent. I'm gonna go back to Coinbase and click, I've sent the funds. And now we wait for the funds to arrive. Normally, I would expect them to arrive the next business day, at most two days later, but they do say that it can take up to three days, so you have to be prepared with a little extra time on your hands in this case. Okay, so I sent my transfer from my bank to Coinbase just before the bank closed Friday afternoon. And as you can see, I got a confirmation email from Coinbase that they had received the deposit at 12.34 on Monday. So it actually goes really quickly, less than a full business day. You have the amount and the date of the transfer in the email. And if you click on view deposit, 
it will redirect you to Coinbase. Yeah, and again, it will show you your deposit, the account it came from, and the exact time that Coinbase received it. I'm gonna exit that. You can see here my balance is 410 euros, which is exactly what I just transferred. And now I'm gonna go click on trade, and I would like to buy Bitcoin. So I'm gonna put in 410 and I'm paying with my Euro wallet. Go to preview buy. And here it shows me at the top exactly how much I would be getting in Bitcoin. I'm paying with my Euro wallet again, or you would be paying with euros, dollars, pounds, whatever currency you use. This is the current price of Bitcoin. So this shows you for one whole Bitcoin, current price would be 8,170 euros and 65 cents, but I'm not buying a whole Bitcoin. I'm buying 0 0.04944283. Because Coinbase is charging a fee of six euros and two cents, I'm actually only gonna be getting 403 euros and 98 cents worth of bitcoin if i had done the instant transfer from my bank to coinbase i would have paid a six euro fee for that and then i would have had to pay this second six euro fee to convert from euro to bitcoin by doing the slower transfer i avoided paying that six euro fee entirely only paid the fee to convert from euros to bitcoin so in the end it cost me one business day more, but I paid 50% in fees. Unfortunately, what that also means is that the amount of money that I transferred on Friday was supposed to be enough to cover the fees for my provider, but since I didn't take that second six euro fee into account, I ended up coming up six dollars short for the payment that my provider receives. So I am gonna have to clear that up. Providers are typically flexible with the Bitcoin fluctuation if you come up maybe a few cents short, but in this case, I'm a full six euros or six dollars short. So that is a much more significant difference. So I am gonna have to talk to my provider and find out if that's gonna be an issue. And I might have to make another transfer to make up for that missing amount. This is again why it's always good to transfer a little bit of extra so that you can avoid ending up in a situation like this. I click buy now. Here you see Bitcoin was successfully purchased. I can click on view transaction and it'll show here that I bought Bitcoin using my Euro wallet. Just moments later, I get a confirmation email from Coinbase saying, that my Bitcoin is now available and all of the details of that transaction again. So right here it's saying that my Bitcoin balance is zero, but if I refresh that page, now you can see I have 402 euros and 91 cent in Bitcoin. Unfortunately, that is a bit below what the provider was expecting, but I'm going to go ahead and send it anyway. So I'm going to go back to the email I got from my provider and copy the Bitcoin address that they gave me. I'm going to go back to Coinbase, paste that address in, and you can enter in the amount you want to transfer in your real world currency or in Bitcoin. So. I'm going to put in send max, it's going to give me the full amount, or I could have just entered in 402 euros and 96 cents, and it would have entered in the equivalent amount in Bitcoin. Now I'm going to click continue. Okay, they're saying the tr transaction will be delayed until it can be authorized. I'm going to click confirm. Okay, so Coinbase is asking to verify my ID before I can complete the transfer. I immediately got an email from them explaining what was going on, and I also got a text message. So they're making sure that nobody has unauthorized access to my account. Yeah, and now I'm being required to verify my ID. So I'm gonna click on driver's license and upload the scan of my driver's license. 
So I've got the front side and the back side. All right, click continue. And now they want me to take a selfie to confirm that I am the person on the ID that I just uploaded. So I'm gonna have to allow them to see me and take a picture. Now they're verifying my ID. This is something that's not gonna happen to you if you just recently created an account. This is something that happens if you haven't used your account in a long time or you clear your cache and all of your cookies and they don't recognize the device or your location and they just want to make sure that nothing suspicious is going on and you are who you say you are. Okay, it took just a few minutes but I did get the email saying my ID has successfully been verified. I can click the button to be redirected back to Coinbase and it looks like my transfer has already gone through. As you can see my Bitcoin balance is back to zero. If I click on my Bitcoin wallet it says I sent the Bitcoin but the transaction is just pending which is normal because it isn't instantaneous it probably takes about 30 to 45 minutes to go through but the transfer has been sent I don't have to re-enter the information again I just have to wait a little bit and everything will be fine normally you get a confirmation email after sending a transfer which looks exactly like this one here but this time for some reason I didn't get one I think it had something to do with that surprise extra ID verification but if you go to Coinbase you can see where the Bitcoin was sent and click on that and it'll pop up a little info sheet showing you the Bitcoin address you sent it to, um, the price of Bitcoin at the time, the fee you paid, and if you click on view transaction it'll pop up another little info page that's a lot more technical but you see if you look at transaction time here it's 1028 and then on the more detailed page, it says that the transfer was received at 1036, which means that it took a total of just eight minutes for the transfer to go through and be received by the provider. Now you're good, your helmets will be on their way, and you've survived dealing with Bitcoins.